guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well this weekend. I mean, it's Friday night when I'm filming this, but I don't know when I'm going to upload this either this weekend or next week. Anyway, that's beside the point. I have kept you guys waiting for this video for so long. I'm so sorry. The reason I have is because I've been feeling anxious myself and I feel like I can't properly film a video about anxiety when I'm not coping with mine myself. I have done a video in the past all about my anxiety. I'm not going to talk too much about it here because that's not what this video is about. But if you guys do want to know a little bit more about my own personal mental health struggle, I have done a video on it. Um, I'll put it in the top corner. I don't know which corner it goes in, but it will be up there for you guys. I personally have anxiety and OCD. And yes, I am professionally diagnosed with those things. Not that it really matters, but I know some people will only take advice from those who have actually been diagnosed. Now, um, I'm by no means a professional. You guys all know that. I'm a makeup artist. I am not a psychologist. I'm not a counselor. I'm not any of those things. These are just my own personal tips on how I try and deal with my own anxiety and what I do when anxiety hits me hard. And I thought it might be helpful to share it with you guys. You might be able to pick up some tips that you're not already doing that could help you out. And you guys might be able to share some of your tips on how to cope with anxiety with me, which I would appreciate as well. So if you do have any that I haven't mentioned here, let me know in the comments down below, please. When I have anxiety, there's a few things that I do that I find help a lot. The first one, is probably the most difficult one because I mean I can do it now because I work for myself like I'm you know a youtuber and Instagram blogger so I work from home but for those of you that work for someone else or you work full-time for someone else this is gonna be far more difficult I know and that would be like when I feel super super anxious I stay at home when I did used to work full-time um, for someone else I used to have to call in sick when I had anxiety really badly. And I don't mean like general anxiety, you know, that kind of low level anxiety that anxiety sufferers kind of live with on a day daily basis, 24 seven. I'm not talking about that kind of anxiety. I'm talking about the full blown panic attack, really anxious. You can't eat, you can't sleep, you can't think straight, your heart's racing, that kind of anxiety. When I experienced that, I cancel everything and I stay home. And the reason I do that is because I know that I won't be able to cope with um, life outside of these four walls if I'm in that kind of mind frame. And you know the worst part about it is I feel like you kind of need to do that when you are feeling that anxious, you need to stay at home, you need to look after yourself and you need to just like let yourself calm down. But I mean, we've come a long way with mental health. It's getting discussed a lot more nowadays and it's getting a lot more accepted in society. However, I still don't, like from my personal experience, I still don't think it's acceptable or it's still frowned upon to ring up your boss, for example, and say, I can't come in today. I'm having really bad anxiety. Do you know what I mean? Because you can't really see anxiety in a person and you don't know... Like, you, you can't prove that you're feeling anxious. So, like, when I was working at my full-time job before I became, you know, what I am now, I would make up an excuse. So, I'd call my boss and be like, I'd have all these, like, go-to illnesses in my head that I would use as an excuse. So, like, why I couldn't go into work instead of saying that I felt anxious. So, I'd say I had a cold, I had a virus, I had a stomach bug, I had a migraine. And I said it in my last mental health video, but... I think the amount of times I called in sick to my job where I was actually ill with like one of those things was maybe 2% and the rest of the times that I called in sick it was because I was suffering really badly with anxiety. But I didn't feel like I was able to tell my bosses that I couldn't come into work because I was feeling anxious because I just felt like I would end up fired. Do you know what I mean? I feel like we've come so far with mental health but we're still not at the point that it's accepted do you know, it's hard to explain, but do you guys know what I'm trying to say here? But anyway, if if you are like having a really, really, really bad time with anxiety, I recommend you stay home if it's possible for you to do so. So then what I do if I'm having a really bad time of it um, anxiety wise is I will either kind of put myself up on, on the lounge or in bed. I'll have a hot water bottle, a cozy blanket, I'll be in super comfortable clothes and I'll make myself a nice calming cup of tea, usually herbal tea, sometimes just regular black tea with a uh, vegan milk and a good book or a good TV show or something like that to kind of immerse 
your brain in something other than your own life and your own anxiety. I will take myself to my safe place and my safe place is on the lounge or in bed with something tasted to eat, comfortable clothes, nice and warm, nice and safe and a good book. Um, so I really recommend that you guys find a safe place like that for you to go to when you are struggling really badly. It makes such a difference. Then I stay there for as long as I need to. So I try to avoid putting any pressure on myself to get things that I know I need to get done. I try to avoid putting pressure on myself to get those things done because when you're not right in the head, the fact of the matter is you're not right in the head and the more pressure you put on yourself, the worse you're going to end up feeling and the longer it's going to take you to get over it. I find that if I give myself time to actually feel the feelings of anxiety and to kind of, you know, hide myself away from the outside world and just cocoon myself in my little safe bubble, I get over the anxiety attack a lot faster than if I was to try and force myself through it and get on with daily life. Um, I find that if I actually give myself time to heal mentally, then I get over that anxiety a lot quicker than if I try and push through it. I feel like sometimes you really need to listen to your body and if your body's telling you that it's panicking and you need to calm down, then you need to listen to your body and you need to do that. Otherwise you end up having like a panic attack in public. Um, another thing I do is I'll have a bath and this is what I do a lot actually. And I do this to kind of avoid getting anxious as well. I find baths to be so soothing. They're warm, they're comforting, you can just lay there and soak and you don't have to do anything. Like you don't have to clean the dishes when you're in the bath. You don't have to do any work when you're in the bath. You're not outside speaking to people when you're in the bath and no one can come in when you're in the bath. I will just literally sit there and soak for hours if need be, just topping up the hot water until I feel calm enough and soothed enough to get out of the bath. Um, one thing I will do is take in a good book or something like that because you, you don't want to fall asleep in the bath. If you feel too relaxed in the bath and you fall asleep, you will probably drown, so don't do that. And another thing I really like to do is soak in magnesium salts or like Epsom salts. And the reason I do that is because I think it's really, really beneficial because if you lack magnesium, which is like a vital mineral that you need in your body, if you are deficient in that, it can cause all sorts of problems for you, including mentally. So my favorite ones, and this video is not sponsored, guys, it's not sponsored by anyone. I don't have to talk about this, I just really like the brand. Um, I will soak in these little guys here. I've got a few packets of these, and I mean, any Epsom salts will do, but this is one that I really like. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'm just filming this with my vlogging camera. But these Epsom salts are by a brand called Soak Smith. I'm pretty sure they're an Australian brand. And the ingredients in this one and why I like this one so much is because it's magnesium sulfate, which is the mineral that you need, which by the way, you can take supplements for orally, but through my research, I found that it actually absorbs into your body better through the skin. So your skin actually absorbs it and you get your magnesium that way. So it's got magnesium sulfate, jasmine and calendula petals, essential oils of rose geranium, mandarin, frankincense, ylang lang, lang lang, and jasmine absolute. So it's super calming, really, really refreshing, and it kind of just revitalizes you and it makes me feel so much better. Another thing that I find really helps me when I'm full blown anxious is this little guy down here. <sighs> so this little guy here is the deep sleep pillow spray from This Works. Um, it's actually made for spraying on your bed clothes. So like your pillow and your doona and your sheets and things like that to help you sleep at night. Um, and I do do that some nights, but what I like to do with this, and it's totally against the rules. Like, I don't even know if you're allowed to do this. I mean, it's not recommended. Um, is I spray it on my clothes when I feel really anxious. And the reason I do that is because it smells of lavender and lavender is like really relaxing and calming. Oh, it smells so good. It literally smells exactly the same as fresh lavender. You know, when you pick one off the bush and you sniff it and it smells amazing, it smells exactly the same as that. So I don't get it on my skin because it's not a perfume. It's not made to go on your skin, but I'll do a little mist kind of just on my clothes like that. And then I can smell it and it just calms me down. It soothes me a lot. So yeah, lavender, um, even if you have lavender essential oils or something like that, I think that'll really help just because lavender is so soothing and calming to the body. Another thing that can really help when you're feeling anxious and in all honesty, I don't personally do this, but I felt like I had to include this in the video anyway because so many people swear by it, is to get some exercise. So um, like go for a stroll, go to the gym, any kind of exercise, even if you just get like a, you know, a yoga app and do yoga in your room or something like that so you don't have to um, go into the outside world. 
exercise is meant to really help calm anxiety because it releases endorphins. Like I said, I personally don't do this myself. The last thing I feel like doing when I'm super anxious is exercising, but a lot of people swear by it, so I felt I had to include it in the video. Another thing I find really, really helps kind of prevent anxiety is eating well. And this is not a video about preventing anxiety because I honestly have no bloody idea how to do that. And if I did know how to do that, I would be doing it because I pretty much have anxiety every single minute of every single day. It's just that sometimes it's higher than other times. But one thing I do find helps it kind of skyrocketing is to eat really healthy. Personally, I eat a plant-based diet and I highly recommend eating that way. But then it's obviously personal choice. I'm not going to force down anyone's throats, but I feel like if you eat loads of good quality, fresh fruit and vegetables and you get enough fiber and protein and things like that into your diet and you avoid heavily processed foods with additives, I find that it will definitely help keep your anxiety on a low level. When you eat good food, you feel like you're looking after yourself and you feel a little bit better about yourself and you feel like you're kind of in control of your life when you eat well. Does that make sense to you guys? That's how I feel about it anyway. Also, um, additives and like <sighs> preservatives and things like that that you find in processed foods really, really muck up your system, including your mental health. So I avoid them at all costs. Um, I think that's all my tips. Like, honestly, I don't have that many tips. I wish I had more. But you guys probably already know that I'm not the best at controlling my anxiety. I still struggle with it a lot, a lot more than I would like to. But oh, another little thing, another tip I wanted to tell you about, and this might be a little bit too TMI for some people, and it's not really a tip on how to deal with anxiety, but if you guys are anxiety sweaters like I am, I'm a huge anxiety sweater, I never usually sweat. It, like if I'm boiling hot, I don't sweat. I only sweat from anxiety and I'll sweat from my underarms. And I'm not talking about a little bit of sweat. I'm talking about, I can literally feel it running down the sides of my ribs. That kind of sweat is what I do when I'm feeling anxious and it's horrible. So like, that's why I wear so much black. That's probably why I'm wearing black right now too. Cause I'm making myself anxious just talking about anxiety. But um, if you are an anxiety sweater, you'll know that anxiety sweat stinks. It smells. Like the BO of anxiety sweat is so much more pronounced than the BO that you get from like hot sweating. Do you know what I mean? Well, anyway, that's what happens for me. If I anxiety sweat, I stink. And I tried so many deodorants in the past trying to like mask the stink of anxiety BO and none of it worked until I came across this golden couple here. So this is a deodorant that I've been using for the last oh, maybe nine or 10 months. I think it's been that long. It is a very natural deodorant. It's pretty much the most natural deodorant I could find. And it is made out of salt or something like that. It's made out of potassium alum, which is a natural mineral salt. That's literally the only ingredient in it. I could not recommend that you guys steer clear of conventional chemical based deodorants and antiperspirants more. They are pure poison for the body and you put them so close to your boobs, which is so freaking dangerous. If you guys want to know more about that, Google it. Um, Google the dangers of conventional deodorants. They're terrible for you. So I would only ever use and recommend a natural deodorant. This is my favorite one because it's made such a difference to my BO. <laughs> this is way, way TMI. But anyway, it has. I don't stink anymore. I haven't smelt BO myself for the last five months and before that I used to be a stinker and I think the reason was anxiety sweat mixed with um, artificial fragrances that were in like conventional deodorants kind of um, built up under my arms and then when you like get warm or you start sweating from anxiety it kind of just shit hits fan and you stink but since I've been using this like this has absolutely no scent to it because it's just made out of whatever I just told you potassium alum it's got no scent at all and it's completely dry. Like it is dry and it's hard. The way it works is you either dampen under your arms or you dampen this under the tap and then you just rub it under your arms. So nothing actually comes off. You can't see anything on your skin. It doesn't smell like anything. You can't feel it on your skin, but somehow it works and it works bloody well. It's not an antiperspirant because humans are meant to perspire. You don't want to be blocking your sweat glands. So it's not an antiperspirant, but it stops you smelling. So the way I use mine, I used to use it with water, but then I came across this little combo and it works 
so well for me, so this is what I do. After my shower, before I apply my deodorant, I spray this under my arms to dampen them. This is from Lush, it's the tea tree water. It's actually a toning water. Um, and the ingredients is tea tree water, grapefruit water, uh, juniper berry water and limonene, whatever the heck that is. Tea tree is a natural antibacterial and the reason your armpits stink if you sweat is because of bacteria. So I feel like these two in collaboration with each other is the perfect combo for somebody that anxiety sweats. That is all my tips guys. I know it wasn't a lot and I know my tips aren't particularly like groundbreaking or anything like that. I just thought I would share that with you guys because I know a lot of you do struggle with anxiety as well. So you guys may have noticed I did not mention medication as a tip on how to cope with anxiety in this video and that's because in my personal experience anti-anxiety medication worked really badly for me. I had um, really bad side effects on it. I was personally on Lexapro and I was on it for probably about six months maybe maybe even longer and I just felt like for me the the harm it did to me far outweighed any benefits it gave me. Personally, I did not find that it helped my anxiety at all. I was still completely anxious on the medication. For me, it didn't ease my anxiety whatsoever. In fact, I don't even think it gave me a placebo effect in thinking that it had eased my anxiety. I was still just as anxious as I was before I ever started taking it. And the side effects I got from it were just so not worth it. Um, I've now weaned myself off the anti-anxiety medication I've been off it I think today is the sixth sixth day that I've been off it and I'm going through withdrawal from it now and it's horrendous like if you guys follow me on Instagram and you watch my Instagram stories you'll know all about this already but basically when I was on the medication it the side effects it gave me I like I felt like my body couldn't regulate its temperature. I've always been the kind of person to lean towards being cold all the time. But when I was on Lexapro, it made me feel hot all the time. Like I would get these hot flashes randomly just doing nothing. Like I could be sat in the lounge doing absolutely nothing. And all of a sudden I would come over all hot and I'd feel like so hot that I, I wanted to take all my clothes off. And that was not normal for me and it was really unpleasant. And not only that, it um, made me get really clammy hands and feet and I never ever had any of those things before I started taking it. And the worst thing for me when I was on it was the night sweats. They didn't happen all the time but they would happen maybe once every two weeks or something like that. I would wake up in the middle of the night absolutely drenched in sweat. And I don't mean like, you know when you like wake up and you're too hot in bed and you're a bit sweaty? No, I'm talking about like I had a wet patch on the bed from where I was lying. And since I've gone off the tablets, which I did do properly this time, I weaned myself off them. So I was on, you know, a certain milligram. I'm not going to say on here how strong my milligrams were. Um, but I weaned myself slowly down and down and down until I stopped taking them altogether. But the withdrawals have been horrendous. Like the last two nights, Basically, since I've gone off them, every single night I've had a night sweat and they've slowly gotten worse. So the last two nights, um, I woke up at about 4 a.m. And when I say I was drenched in sweat, I'm talking saturated. Like, it's as though I'd had a shower and then not bothered to dry myself and just gone and gotten straight in bed and put the doona over me. Like, you could flick the water off my skin like I was there was a pool of water in my belly button like I was soaked so the last two nights I've had to like it's woken me up because I'm lying in bed soaking wet so I've had to go and dry myself with a towel as though you would having gotten out of the bath and then I couldn't get back into bed because my side of the bed was soaking wet from where I was lying so I've literally had to wake Darren up and warn him that I'm about to blow dry my side of the bed to dry it so I can actually get back into bed. But that's not the only side effect I've had since withdrawing from the tablets. I've been getting vertigo as well. And thankfully, and I touch wood. <laughs> Where's some wood? Okay, touch wood. Um, touch wood, I haven't had any of it today, but the last five days or so I've been getting vertigo where it feels like the earth is kind of like moving like that. It kind of feels like you're on a boat. You feel like unstable and if I moved my head 
you know, fast, I felt the earth kind of go like, ooh. Very odd feeling, I didn't like it one bit, but thankfully today I haven't had any of that, which I hope means that this withdrawal period might be coming to an end soon. So the reason I didn't mention um, medication as a tip on how to handle anxiety is because it didn't work for me. However, in saying that, I don't want to discourage anybody from taking it because personally, I know a lot of people that anti-anxiety medication has worked wonders for. Um, and what I would suggest you do is if you're struggling really badly with anxiety, uh, speak to your doctor. Don't suffer in silence. That's not going to do you any good whatsoever. Go and speak to your doctor. They will either recommend that you go and see a counselor or you see a psychologist or you go on medication or maybe they'll recommend a mixture of all three. Do what your doctor says and then see how it works for you personally. Everybody's different. Medication works differently on everybody. Personally, I don't want to be on any medication anymore. This is kind of the experience I had has kind of given me a fear of SSRI medication and I don't want to be on it anymore. My younger sister, she is studying to become a psychologist and she was kind of talking me through it. She's like, that medication that you were on obviously didn't work well for your body, but you could try a different medication that may not have any side effects for you at all, but may help you with your anxiety. And she's right, I know that, I could do that, but personally, I'm choosing at the moment to not be on any kind of medication at all. Um, I'm going to see how I go and I'm going to try and handle my anxiety kind of spiritually with meditation and um, writing, which is really cathartic and can help you. And I may go back to uh, a psychotherapist if I can find a good one. So that's my plans for the future in regards to anxiety. So wish me luck, guys. Um, either way, I'm keeping everybody updated on Instagram stories on how my withdrawal process is going. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram and you want to, I'll put it in the description box down below for you. And that's all I had to talk to you about. I really hope that some of this was helpful for you guys. Sometimes I feel like it just helps to know that other people are going through anxiety and you know mental health issues as well and that you're not alone in it. I'm going to leave this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you and if you are feeling anxious or if you're struggling with your mental health at all, know that you are not alone and um, talk to somebody. Love you guys. I'll see you in my next video.